Hello and welcome to the Friday live stream with Avid CNC. I'm Sammy and I'm joined by my co-host Corey and we're so thrilled to be here. Thanks everyone for joining. Let us know where you're tuning in from and uh, if you're working on any projects this weekend, we want to hear about that too. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Happy Friday. It's a beautiful day here in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about some of these things. Uh, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff going on right now in the maker community. Uh, and, you know, is the season of making. So right. I'm excited. Right. So we uh, have been doing this open studio format a couple different times. It's kind of open office hours. Hey, Izzy, thanks for joining. Uh, got our, our champions here in the chat. Um, all right, so we uh, want to have an open format where we get to talk about uh, new releases and um, all sorts of updates that we have for you. If you have CAD CAM questions, we can get to that at the end. And uh, we have some extra special segments uh, where some of our amazing content creators and uh, folks contributed a little bit of, to a holiday gift recommendation. So uh, yeah. we have a good uh, amount of stuff in store for you. Um, so Definitely. one of the, the things I know that Izzy's excited about for sure is our 8.7 horsepower spindle product launch. We made this video live this morning. So if you haven't seen it already, the link is in the description below. We'll also play it for you in a few minutes here. But Corey, will you give us a little bit of an update and tell us about the 8.7 horsepower spindle? Yeah, so, so this bigger spindle really is going to allow for an increase in capabilities, but uh, really an increase in performance and, and just uh, how much material the machine can remove uh, in a given time period. And so whether you are uh, using large diameter tools and surfacing uh, slabs mm -hmm. or using you know compression bits or, or traditional tools and creating pockets or, or through slots, uh, uh, perimeters in, in, in plywood or other traditional materials, uh, this big spindle is really going to allow for uh, a productivity increase, and I'm excited about that. You know, a lot of people think uh, ATC is the only way to productivity increases, but really these 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 mm -hmm. uh, large diameter tools and uh, ability to do full pass depth uh, processing, uh, we really feel like this is a, a, a huge step forward in the productivity of these machines. Right. If you guys have questions about the uh, new Big Spindle, just drop that in the chat and we'll be ha happy to answer them for you. Uh, we Let's go ahead and watch this uh, promo video. I'm proud of it. Uh, Winona and I worked hard to bring some big sci-fi energy. Um, yeah, so we'll watch that and we'll be back in a few minutes here.
All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun to make, and I took a lot of inspiration from Jaco in our uh, filming and um, inspiration. Uh, so yeah, go ahead, Corey. Uh, you want to give us some? Um... Oh, I love I love watching that thing in action. Man, is it cool watching that thing just uh, go through material? So we used a couple different tools there. Uh, uh, we were showcasing that. Uh, at what we would consider kind of the the top end of what the, the that tool is capable of. So this would be a hundred percent step over at those feeds and speeds and depths of cut. Um, so that was really showcasing, you know, the material removal rate and kind of using those larger tools that that spindle is capable of. But one thing that I do want to add to that is that it's also a much wider RPM range. So uh, we have 1,000 to 24,000 as a controllable RPM range with this spindle. And so not only is it great at this high material removal rate, but it's also great when you have smaller or more delicate cuts because we can really drop that RPM down so we can get mm -hmm. the proper chip load. And you know how I feel about chip load, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's that is what our goal of CAM uh, should be is to calculate achievable and accurate chip loads that the machine can 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 make for us. And and so uh, yeah, really excited about that. So we did have a couple questions. Uh, one of them was about power and, and uh, we were showcasing it with a uh, being powered with three phase. You can power that spindle with single phase 220 volt power. This does reduce its uh, available output. Mm -hmm. So it does bring it down to about six and a half horsepower, which is still a significant jump up. Uh, but uh, it's the same motor. So in the event that you do bring in uh, additional three-phase power into your shop, or if you move into a shop that has three-phase, uh, all you do is re uh, remove the adapter, uh, plug it in, and you now get to take uh, full capability of that tool without really any uh, any adjustments other than that, that power availability. Right. I want to say uh, thank you, Chad, so much. I appreciate that. And hello, Jay. Thanks for being here. I am definitely going to feature it. We're going to show uh, some things that Jay has shared recently. And in regards to the material removal rate of comparing the three horsepower spindle uh, to the 8.7 horsepower spindle or on single phase, right, which would bring it down to closer to six horsepower uh, for the Amana 2241 the um on the three horsepower it is the material removal rate is about 80.4 and when you run that same tool on a uh, single phase on the six kilowatt it is going to be closer to 190 uh, instead so and then the material removal rate on the 2257 it'll be about 90. so it just uh uh, I hope that those numbers help a little bit. It definitely is going to still, even on single phase, it's going to more than double uh, your productivity in regards to that. Um, I yeah, definitely would recommend if you have the space for that upgrade, it's still going to be a significant um, step up on single phase. Definitely significant from a power standpoint mm -hmm. and also significant because of the RPM control. And so you're, you're going to get both sides mm -hmm. of that benefit, even with single phase power. Right, right. Izzy, Izzy can tell you all about it, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it did. Uh, uh, the productivity capabilities of this spindle with our NEMA 34 drive electronics and our pro series machines. Um, I think uh, it's it's just really exciting to, to see these machines in action and uh, the amount of work that they're producing. Um, and yeah, it, it's, uh, I hope uh, you are also preparing for a good dust collection system and sheet good management because uh, uh, this, this spindle is definitely gonna uh, produce a lot of chips and parts for you. Right, and as Corey mentioned earlier, this uh, the settings we are showing here is to show that material removal rate and not necessarily the most common use case because I don't think most likely you're going to be running a 2.5 inch uh, fly cutter at that deep. So it'll definitely, you'll have more room to increase your feed rate uh, if you're going for a shallower depth of cut when you're, you're leveling a slab, for example. So mm -hmm. do take that into consideration that that's what... Uh, we're trying to show here was the maximum depth of cut capabilities and material removal rate. Um, yeah. So just wanted to make sure you have that background as well. Yeah. 
Uh, what's the controllable yes. RPM range for both spindles on single phase? So uh, our three horsepower spindle, we have a controllable RPM range of 8,000 mm -hmm. to 24,000. And uh, the 8.7 horsepower uh, spindle is 1,000 to 24,000. Um, and that's controllable right through the software. Uh, you know, having that advantage uh, when you're doing your chip load calculation really opens up different tools and, uh, you know, it, it uh, is a big advantage on the programming side of things. Right. Um, and in regards to the question about ATC, of course, we're going to have questions about that. Uh, yes, there uh, will be future ATC options. Um, stay tuned. Uh, much of our engineering uh, you know, team is focused on making that a really refined and uh, prescribed solution that will be able to be backwards compatible, you know, so that your mm -hmm. machine can evolve with you and your business and also be to be integrated really well in regards to a software approach as well. So uh, we want to make sure to make that perfect for you. So stay tuned. Um, yeah, in regards to that. Yeah. Uh, so the other uh, update we have for folks who might be interested is our branding plates. I know that lots of you uh, would like to have one on your machine as well. Uh, we're working on getting those into all future orders. And also if you would like a branding plate, we're going to make those available for the next three months. If you uh, send us an email to support at Avid CNC, you will be able to receive a a branding plate if you have a machine. So just send an email with a picture of your machine um, and as well as uh, your order number and we'll be happy to send you one. Yeah, yeah, we'd uh, love to, to send these out and, and get them on anyone's machine who wants wants them on the machine. Uh, uh, they're a beautiful aluminum uh, branding plate with the hardware and yeah, just shoot us an email support at avidcnc.com. Uh, if you can include your order number, if you know it, or if you can find it, that would be fantastic. And then, yeah, we'd love to see a picture of you or a project with the, the, the machine if possible. So if you can include that in with the email, uh, we sure would appreciate it. Right. And then once you get your branding plate, you go ahead and put that on your machine and send us and tag us uh, on a photo on social media. And we'll be so thrilled to be able to share your work. If you have uh, photos or videos, clips, you can always email us at media at avidcnc.com. And I'm happy to uh, share that with our community as well. So please, um, I'm always excited to get to see the amazing work that you do, the projects and the diversity of fields and folks that are using these machines. It's really uh, incredible to see from everything from um, you know, custom plywood furniture to stone sculptures, you know, I want to see it all. So please share with us. Yeah. Yeah, no, and we've uh, gone through a, a number of design iterations with these, and I really like what we've landed on here, Sammy. It's a brushed aluminum. Uh, uh, the, the, the red and black ink just look fantastic on it. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm really excited to, to, to see the Avid CNC name. Uh, on, on all those machines, you know, there's a lot of uh, CNC router parts machines out there, uh, you know, and I'm really excited to uh, uh, see see our, our you know, our, our branding plate on, on all of our existing machines in the field. So please shoot us an email. Uh, we'd, we'd love to get one to you. Right. And we just want to say thank you so much for the interest. And we're uh, blessed to have a uh, such a wonderful community that's just talking about and spreading word of mouth and sharing, as uh, we always say, genuine referrals. And that's really what we're built on as, you know, a uh, Pacific Northwest based American company. We are so uh, honored to get to have so many wonderful folks who are uh, talking about their experiences with the machines and uh, how it's helped their businesses grow. So uh, we want to say thank you to everyone for that. And, and we want to reciprocate with this, you know, small, small gesture and, and uh, yeah, send us an email. Yeah. Thank you all so much. It's uh, we couldn't be here without you. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and um, I guess jump into our seasonal uh, segment here. We have, uh, I requested a to a couple of our uh, collaborators to send us some videos, uh, just making some recommendations of good gifts for makers. And uh, a lot of them are uh, projects, simple, easy projects you could do, or really nice 
extra, you know, tools that are complementary, um, and some, you know, merch from different uh, makers that we follow. So let's go ahead and watch some of those. And then Corey and I will come back and talk about some of our favorite things. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and watch that. And we'll be back in a second. Hi, I'm Lynn from the Darwin Orbit channel. And here are some of my holiday gift recommendations. For the CNC enthusiast in your life, I would recommend getting some high quality tiny bits. We're talking like 1 16th of an inch, 1 eighth of an inch. Um, these are really great for making like small ornaments or carving really fine patterns. And they usually don't come in regular like sets with bits. Uh, so they're really great. And when I'm carving small stock like that, I really like to secure that to the machine uh, using some really thick blue tape. Uh, or wide blue tape and some CA glue, which I also think would make like great stocking stuffers. Uh, so those are some tips from me. Hey, Keegan from Dark Arrow. I've got two holiday gift recommendations for you. I've got to plug first and foremost, the Dark Arrow sweatshirt with these colder months coming ahead of us. It's really nice to have something like this to keep you warm. My second one would be the Saga pen from Grimsmo Knives. I've been staring at that thing for a long time. It looks absolutely awesome. If you get a chance to get one from, for someone, I would highly recommend it. All right, thanks guys. Hi, Char here, also known as the Wooden Maven. Since we won't be able to travel this Christmas, I have decided to make handmade gifts for my nieces and nephews around the country. One of the things I did was make personalized ornaments for everybody here on my laser cutter and engraver. One other cool thing that I was able to do, which is great for little kids, is make LED paper card craft cards. And all you need is any image that you can find online, an LED light, some copper tape, and a battery. I make this reindeer here and his little nose lights up. And you can make these for about $2 a card. I hope you guys enjoyed these crafts. Merry Christmas. Hi, my name is Simone and my holiday gift recommendation is the app Procreate. No, it is not a fertility app. It is a sketch app and I build a lot of projects and I sketch things. I'm not that good at using pen and paper. Like it just never comes out looking the way I want to. But this app just helps me make things look as good as I want them to. Also, if you're like me and you're always out late with gifts, like giving somebody an app is the easiest thing. Like you don't have to send it in a package or yeah, you can do it 20 minutes before you're about to see them for the holidays. So yeah, my recommendation is the app Procreate for anyone who likes sketching their project or sketching in general. Hey Sammy, hey Corey, it's Becky here from Vetric and I'm currently stood in the Vetric's 2020 12 Projects of Christmas set which is the perfect place for me to actually talk about some of my favourite gift recommendations and I totally recommend uh, our free projects that we put out throughout the year and especially those ones that we put out this time of year, the 12 Projects of Christmas. So last year uh, myself and Todd worked on some projects. My favourite one that Todd created was this toy car. This is perfect for kids. It's also just nice just to have on your desk and just roll around. Um, my other favourite project is one I made and that is this Nordic Santa. So he's just a little standing ornament. I think he's super cute um, and would look perfect on anyone's mantelpiece. So from everyone at Betrick, we want to wish you all happy holidays and we will see you in 2021 for some more happy making adventures. All right, well, thank you all so much who uh, shared a video with us and shared some of their amazing uh, projects and uh, all their recommendations. Um, I just found the nameplate here that I wanted to show you all, um, one that's not attached to my machine here, uh, just because it's such a high quality uh, print and they're just so beautiful. So I just had to, I, Corey, I think you have to look the other way. <laughs> there it is. Uh, <laughs> so 
Uh, there it is, the nameplate. And um, yeah, let's just go through our list and Corey and I can talk about some of our other favorite things. And uh, I hope that some of these are new to you. Many of these uh, makers are have uh, a YouTube channel or an Instagram. So please go ahead and follow and support them. That's a totally free way to be able to help and support um, makers and creators. Um, Corey, do you want to start us out with uh, some of your... Uh, the things you've added to our list here? Yeah, so I have some CNC specific favorites that, that that are just simple and easy. One of them is is the fuzz brush. I uh, I just love this tool. I use it uh, I use it quite a bit, and uh, it just uh, allows for me to get any kind of potential splinters off of my material before I grab it. And really, that's one of the reasons why I like it the most. It prevents me from from getting splinters. Uh, I, I love Lynn's idea, you know, tooling is one of those things where even if uh, uh, you don't use it uh, right away, knowing that you have a tool is sometimes exceptionally valuable. So whether that's a, a keyhole tool or a dovetail tool or kind of a unique tool, um, uh, there's, there's, you know, tooling is, is, is always a great option. Right. Um, that also that four inch wide blue tape. I mean, I didn't know I needed that in my life, but I definitely do. So here's this fuzz brush that Corey's talking about. Um, they handed these out at Vectric user group, uh, last 2019. <laughs> um, and the definitely useful, uh, uh, little, uh, tool here. Yeah. So, so it's, it's a, it's a steel brush. So it features a, a nice foam handle or a, a wood handle here, and so uh, obviously there there are a lot of opportunities for for uh, making something similar to this or, or or getting this exact model. Right, and another really wonderful curated list here. Jay has put together the ultimate holiday gift buying guide. He put out a call for folks who follow his channel to submit their. Um, you know, small shops, small businesses. So, I mean, that's really uh, so many, all the folks that we get to work with and, you know, careers that Corey and I both came from in making and fabrication. So uh, lots of wonderful people here to uh, support. I've added this link and uh, many of these other links in the description below. So um, check out this guide uh, as well. So we have the fuzz brush there. I also have uh, Pink Soul Studios. If you're looking for uh, project files, um, Alma makes amazing products. Uh, she has this record stand that I love, uh, custom mallets. So she's got lots of amazing work uh, as well. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Tim Sway has a video he put out uh, about making a DIY board game and mm -hmm. that was an uh he you know he's all about support he calls it support plaid instead of you know boycotting Black Friday it's support plaid you know classic uh woodworker plaid you know um small yeah. businesses so yeah cribbage boards checker boards uh, uh uh all sorts of 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 games are phenomenal to you know to make and as a gift and so if you are in a position where you can can make someone a game that could be a really fun thing to to gift to someone. Right. Uh, let's see what we had a wonderful recommendation from Keegan at Dark Arrow. Um, if you haven't, uh, go back and watch some uh, one of our interviews and check out their YouTube channel if you're interested in cutting carbon fiber or airplanes or aerospace in general. Uh, really amazing what they um, do. Uh, the next uh, thing on my list, at least, is I will share my window here. Is Girls Garage. So if you are trying to support organizations, uh, there's many that exist already, and Girls Garage is been doing these fundraisers to help get build toolkits. Uh, to put in the hands of young people, of youths, and uh, these girls are making amazing, they're building chairs and they're, you know, age 12, uh, and I'm just blown away because by their work. So go support uh, Girls Garage if you have the means. Um, they have, uh, I usually wearing my Girls Garage sweatshirt, and, but they also are, are doing the fundraiser for the, to the tools as well. Yeah, no, they're doing great stuff. Um, you know, uh, and then there's consumables in the mm -hmm. shop. And so if, if you're unsure, you know, there's always, you know, shop vac filters and those consumables that uh, 
uh, are always lovely gifts. And so if, if you know of any uh, uh, saw blades or, or jigsaw blades, uh, you know, all that type of stuff can be, be really great for a maker. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know that Corey and I were talking about clamps earlier. You can never have enough clamps, so that's always a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, clamps are, are a great one. And actually, Izzy, uh, I, I love some of your DIY clamp builds, mm -hmm. uh, specifically the panel clamp uh, system. Uh, the fact that it has the integrated shelf, so it holds your material uh, at an angle when you're clamping it up, and it's just one of those systems that just, just it's, it's, a, it's a really fun build, and more importantly, it kind of stows away really easily and is really functional. Right. All right. Well, we have a lot of uh, recommendations there for you to click through. I hope you find some inspiration there. Um, let's see, Corey, unless you miss, unless I missed anything on your wish list. No, it's, uh, you know, happy making, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, uh, a, a made gift is always the best gift. Right. Um, I have been really inspired to use up all of my scrap. As you can see, I have piles of walnut cutoffs and unfinished glue ups. So I have a, an, a project idea. Maybe it'll make it onto one of these December streams coming up here. Um, I want to share some more of our website updates uh, here. I'm going to share the screen. So we have a new connect site and a support website. So here, uh, when you, it's, this is the link in our bio on Instagram. So when you go there, we have a couple of these quick links, you know, recent videos, featured makers, usually the link to the live stream so you can find it right away super easily. Uh, we also have our news tab here, which is a, kind of a, a blog format, you know, videos, uh, recent videos and mm -hmm. live streams and, uh, product launches, all sorts of things like this. You know, when we uh, showed up on a, a podcast like the Digital Fabrication Experiment podcast, that's a good one. Go listen. Um, so lots of uh, good things here. And then we also have our oh, our makers tab. So lots of the folks that we get to collaborate with uh, are featured here as well. There we go. We've got Izzy. <laughs> We've got Tim. So we have, um, you know, all of our amazing makers here featured uh, that we're, you know, honored to learn from every day. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then if you go here, you can, takes us to the new support site. So we've tried to keep this very simple and easy to navigate, but still to have all of the information that you mm -hmm. need to source uh, as you're troubleshooting or as you're assembling your machine. So I, I encourage you to check out our uh, new support site as well. Yeah, it's got all sorts of uh, goodies. Uh, it's it's very search friendly when you get into the different sections, uh, and you know uh, our support system and educational materials are something we are are always working on. And so, uh, if you can't find anything, or if you want to encourage us to include something, you know, uh, reach out to us. Let's talk about your machine. Let's talk about what you got going on. And uh, uh, we have every interest in in continuing to make. Uh, the support of these tools and, and CAD CAM workflows uh, as, as easy as possible. <laughs> right. Awesome. So uh, that's most of the updates I have here. Corey, do you have any more um, thoughts? Uh, up earlier, uh, someone was asking mm -hmm. about uh, limitations in machine rigidity with the bigger spindle. And I guess just, just acknowledging that question, and you know, there's limited limiting uh, uh, factors in, in any mechanical system in regards to rigidity and the forces you're applying to it. And so really what it comes down to is, uh, you know, we have a gantry based system with, with a Z axis. And so if we can try to put that mechanical system in the best position possible to, to deal with the uh, forces, um, you know, that's ideal. And so uh, what you saw in the video earlier was what we would call a typical application where material is loaded essentially on the machine bed. Uh, we are not overextending the Z-axis. We are using a tool properly installed in the collet system. And those are the achievable, uh, uh, you know, material removal rates that we have and are listed. And so what we found uh, is under these, these circumstances, those were the performance of that system in an accurate way. Right. We have a couple more questions here. Spoil board to pristine. Are you talking about this one here? Because um, I'll tell you, I have cut into it a little bit, but I do prefer to zero to my spoil board. Uh, mm -hmm. I used to uh, 
almost exclusively zero to the material surface, mostly because if you make a mistake, it's more likely to do air passes than to dive into your spoil board. Um, mm -hmm. But I found that I prefer to keep my spoil board pretty uh, nice. And, um, you know, it's nice when you have your own machine versus a machine that's shared in a maker space, for example. Um, so you you might see more cuts into the spoil board in that case. Um, yeah, good good point, good catch though, but that's why. Um, uh, someone got a new computer. Uh, let's see, any tips about transferring Vectric and Mach 4 to a new computer? Uh, so Vectric, I believe you can go to your VNO account, uh, account mm -hmm. and download from there. Um, I mm -hmm. think I have Vectric, my account downloaded on a couple of different computers because I'm operating many, a couple of different uh, machines, but you can, um, mm -hmm. it because it needs to connect to the internet there, you should just be able to download from your account. And definitely, uh, yeah, they, they have a user agreement, mm -hmm. but I, I, uh, there is, there's, uh, is an opportunity to have uh, their software on multiple computers. And then uh, the Mach 4, you can also transfer that license, but Mach 4 is linked to your PCID number. Mm -hmm. And so there is a couple steps uh, that we need to do to transfer that license to um, that new computer. Right. Should they contact support in order to to help with that or? Yeah, yeah. If, if you're if you're looking to do that, reach out support at avidcnc.com and we'll point you towards those directions. Right. Awesome. Well, let us know if there's any more questions here. Uh, send us an email if you want your Avid CNC branding plate. And uh, we're excited to see all of uh, your posts and uh, photos and projects. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone. We. Uh, uh, yeah, this is a wonderful stream. So thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Have a great day. Bye.